right. Hello, welcome. Uh, we're going to be doing Unit 2 today, so please have your book ready. And if you need to pause the video, please pause the video now and get your book. All right, so let's begin. Unit 2 should be Business Communication. And you should be on page nine. So please be on page nine. We'll be talking about video conferencing and the advantages and disadvantages, meaning the good things and the bad things about video conferencing. Now, these are all good things and bad things, but in the conversation you're going to be listening to, they only mention some of these things. So please listen carefully and check what you hear. And that will be on page nine. So let's listen. Unit two, track four. Hi, Akmal. Are you coming to the video conference this afternoon? I have to be there, Sakura. I'm responsible for setting up the equipment and I'm a bit nervous about it. Remember the last time we had a video conference? We had to stop because of technical problems. We couldn't get a picture on the screen. Yes, I remember. I can see why you're nervous, but I'm sure it won't happen again. Video conferences are just so important for our work. Well, of course, they're perfect for keeping in touch with our business partners. But I don't really like them. Oh, why not? Because business is about building personal relationships, about meeting people face to face, about... But sorry for interrupting. We have business contacts all over the world. Just think of the time we would need to visit them all. And think of the cost of getting there. We can save the cost of flights and accommodations by having a video conference. Yes, I know. But I look forward to meeting my contacts personally. Video conferences are so impersonal. There's no small talk. There's nothing personal. Talking about our families and things like that. Well, I don't agree. I'm fed up with traveling around the world for meetings. Now that we're doing more video conferences, I can spend more time at home with my family instead of just talking about them when I'm away. I know what you mean. But don't you feel shy in front of the camera? I know some people do. Me, for example. No, I think I'm pretty good at talking to a camera. You're lucky. I've got to learn to live with it, I suppose. Listen, how about meeting for coffee before the conference? And you can give me some tips? I'd be happy to do that, Akmal. See you later. All right, so I just want to give you guys one small hint. You should have a total of eight boxes checked. So please, if you need to pause the video or go back and listen to this one more time, please do it now. All right, welcome back. And um, let's go over the answers quickly. So the advantages that were mentioned were Easy to keep in touch with business partners, saves time, saves money, and less traveling. Now the disadvantages that were mentioned, some people are shy in front of the camera, no personal contact, no small talk, and something that was mentioned at the beginning technical problems. All right, so if you need to pause and look at these answers against what you have in your book, do so now. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, you're going to listen to the same conversation one more time, and please finish the sentences. So let's listen one more time here to the conversation. Unit 2, track 4. Hi, Akmal. 
Are you coming to the video conference this afternoon? I have to be there, Sakura. I'm responsible for setting up the equipment, and I'm a bit nervous about it. Remember the last time we had a video conference? We had to stop because of technical problems. We couldn't get a picture on the screen. Yes, I remember. I can see why you're nervous, but I'm sure it won't happen again. Video conferences are just so important for our work. Well, of course, they're perfect for keeping in touch with our business partners. But I don't really like them. Oh, why not? Because business is about building personal relationships, about meeting people face to face, about... But sorry for interrupting. We have business contacts all over the world. Just think of the time we would need to visit them all. And think of the cost of getting there. We can save the cost of flights and accommodations by having a video conference. Yes, I know. But I look forward to meeting my contacts personally. Video conferences are so impersonal. There's no small talk. There's nothing personal. Talking about our families and things like that. Well, I don't agree. I'm fed up with traveling around the world for meetings. Now that we're doing more video conferences, I can spend more time at home with my family instead of just talking about them when I'm away. I know what you mean, but don't you feel shy in front of the camera? I know some people do, me, for example. No, I think I'm pretty good at talking to a camera. You're lucky. I've got to learn to live with it, I suppose. Listen, how about meeting for coffee before the conference? And you can give me some tips? I'd be happy to do that, Akmal. See you later. All right, so let's go over the um, yeah, uh, answers here. You were supposed to finish the sentences. That, that is what they were saying. All right, so for number one, they had to stop the video conference because they had technical problems. They couldn't get a picture on the screen. Akma thinks that business is about building personal relationships face to face, seeing people face to face. Takuda thinks you would need a lot of time to visit all your business contacts. She's talking about traveling in order to see them. Akma looks forward to meeting his contacts personally. Akmal is shy in front of the camera. So remember, he said, how about we meet for some coffee? Because Akmal hopes that Sakura can give him some tips about talking in front of the camera. All right, let's move on to the next one. And here we have the grammar focus verb plus ing after prepositions. Now we did do prepositions last time in unit one. This time we're doing gerunds, verbs that end in ing, after the prepositions. So the prepositions you would need are here. So go ahead. Think about what prep prepositions might be missing here. And yeah, pause the video for as long as you need, starting now. OK, welcome back. Let's go over the prepositions. I am responsible for setting up the equipment. Business is about building personal relationships. Think of the cost of getting there. I am looking forward to meeting my contacts personally. I'm fed up, I'm tired with traveling around the world. I'm pretty good at talking to a camera. All right, so for B, very quickly, uh, when a verb follows a preposition, it's a gerund. So the verb ends in 
ing. Okay, great. Uh, you need to pause and look at this now. All right, let's move on. We're continuing with the same grammar. Here we have the prepositions, so it's that much easier. Remember, just like unit one, where you see 2x, for example, 4, that means it's used twice. So take a look at these sentences, and you're going to be, one, writing in the correct preposition and making the verb into a gerund. So let's look at number one together to make it easier. All right, I look forward to, and then the verb here is meet, but remember ing, just like it says in grammar focus. I look forward to meeting my clients personally. So go ahead and look at the rest, two through seven. Pause the video for as long as you need. Now. Okay, let's begin. So remember, four is used twice. Shall we meet personally instead of talking on the phone? Excuse me for being late to the meeting. What about the cost of buying the hardware? The conference will be about improving sales. Skype is perfect for keeping in touch with clients. Akmal is not good at talking to a camera. And a reminder at the, at the bottom here, whenever it follows a preposition, ing. All right, so again, you need to pause. Please pause now. All right, let's move on to the next one. Here, every sentence will use the preposition by. So look at number one for what you have to do. You can find a lot of information by, the verb is use. So you can find a lot of information by using a search engine. So you're turning the verbs in the parentheses into gerunds. Again, grammar focus. All right, so go ahead. Pause the video for as long as you need now. Okay, let's move on. Let's, sorry, let's continue. You can pass your exams by studying hard. You can remember what the teacher said by taking notes. You can find out what a word means by looking it up in the dictionary. You can get better grades by checking your answers. Good advice. Always double check your answers on tests. All right. We're going to move on. This is a pretty long unit, so I'm going to go a little quick. All right. Now, th this says work with a partner. So, as I mentioned in unit one, I plan on doing this page in class. All right, uh, before we end with grammar focus, if you need to pause and look at this page, go ahead. This is just an example of the grammar focus we've just been doing. So go ahead and pause now. Okay, let's move on. Now we're moving on to the second grammar focus, and that is the past tense of can, must, have to. Remember, in the present tense, have to, must, in the those same are, 
had to, that's it. And can, could. Uh, go ahead and pause the video here for as long as you need to look at this. But we, we have already done it here. All right, so let's move on. So for here, you have two things. One, complete the sentence using the past tense. So you have the present tense, then the same sentence in the past tense. And for H, please complete the sentence with can, can't, could, or couldn't. Look at the whole sentence first. Remember, if it's a, if it's in the present tense, keep it in the present tense. If it's in the past tense, then change can, can't, and so on to the past tense. OK, so let's look at number one as an example here for G. Every day, I have to get up early for work. So yesterday, I had to get up early. And number one for H, I'm afraid I, the meeting next week. So here, the sentence we know is in the present tense. So this, sorry, this part will be in the present tense, can't attend. All right, if you need to pause the video, please pause the video now. All right, welcome back, and let's take a look at G, completing the sentence in the past tense. Akio has to run for the bus every morning. Yesterday morning, he had to run for the bus. Now, just a reminder here, you already saw it for number one. Uh, the first verb is always in the past tense. The second verb stays in the present tense. I cannot attend the meeting this week. Last week, I could not attend the meeting. We have to discuss some problems with our boss this afternoon. Last Friday, we had to discuss some problems with our boss. Can you contact your clients via Skype? Could you contact your clients by Skype yesterday? Via, by, same. Okay, H, remember, if it's in the present tense, it stays in the present tense. If it's in the past tense, it stays in the past tense. I'm afraid I cannot attend the meeting next week. Akmal is so nervous about the video conference. He can't sleep at night. It stays in the present tense. We wanted to go to the concert, but we couldn't get tickets. Remember, wanted, past tense. Bodin can drive, but he doesn't have a car. Lee couldn't find her keys, so she took the bus. <clears throat> we couldn't buy anything because the shops were closed. I'm sorry, I'm not ready yet. That's okay. I can wait. Huang could speak English when he was only five years old. And I'm assuming this is Huang. Okay, great. If you need to pause and look at these, go ahead. All right, work with a partner. Well, you know what that means. We're going to do it in class. All right, here we have a survey. Yi Ling Sim is taking part in a survey. So you're going to be listening to the survey and listening to her answers. Uh, we, please take note that sometimes 
more than one answer is correct. Not all of these, but some of them will have more than one. So listen carefully to the survey and listen to her answers. Uh, let's do that right now. Track 5 OK, Ms. Sim, shall we get started? The first question is, how long do you spend online at work each day on average? Oh, I spent most of my working day online in one way or another. So I guess on average about six to seven hours a day. What is the main reason you go online at work? Reading and writing emails, Skyping, researching on the internet? Oh, definitely emailing. Sometimes I do internet research for my boss. My boss uses Skype a lot, but I don't do it very often. How many emails do you send and receive each day at work? I guess I write between 25 and 30 emails a day on average, but I get dozens of emails. If I'm off work for a couple of days, I usually have over 200 emails in my inbox when I get back. So you don't check your work emails when you were on vacation? No way! <laughs> what about social media? Do you use social media in your company? Yes, we do. And what sort of social media do you use? We have intranet chat rooms, forums, and message boards where we can post ideas or comments or upload images. That way we can discuss things with colleagues in other parts of the world. Which social networking sites do you use and why? At home I use Facebook and Twitter, but I don't use it at work. It's blocked. But the marketing department uses them for marketing and advertising. And my boss uses LinkedIn to keep in touch with her business contacts. How do you prefer to communicate? Face-to-face, -face, on the phone, by email or text messages? Well, I like to talk to colleagues and customers face-to-face, -face, but emails are quick and you have it in writing. Do you ever communicate with handwritten messages? Not very often, but sometimes I write down telephone messages. How often do the people in your office have video conferences? Well, I personally don't have them, but my boss has them a lot, and I help her to prepare for them, and I sometimes take the minutes. What about conference phone calls? My boss sometimes makes conference calls, and again, I take the minutes. That's it? Those are all my questions. Thank you so much for your time, Ms. Sim. Okay, uh, whether you need to pause the video and check your answers or go back and listen to this one more time, please do that now. Okay, welcome back and uh, let's go over the answers of this survey. So, how long do you spend online at work each day? On average, she said, about six hours, so more than four. So what is the main reason you go online at work? Reading and writing emails. And how many emails do you send and receive each day at work? She said about 25 to 30, so more than 25. What sort of social media do you use in your company? chat rooms, and forums. What social networking sites do you use at work? She said she uses Facebook and Twitter at home, but at work, none. How do you like to communicate? She said she loves talking face-to-face, -face, but email is also good because, well, it's in writing. Do you ever communicate with handwritten messages? Sometimes. How often do people in your office have video conferences? Often. And she said she usually takes the minutes, just like the conference calls. How often do people in your office have conference calls? Sometimes. Okay, so for the next page, it, it will be do this, uh, talk to your partner and ask questions similar to this. 
this is actually a very good survey that I might have you guys do in class. But let's look at the next page. It says, work with a partner, make a questionnaire using this as an example. So again, a page like this, please look at these pages because I do plan on doing pages like this in class. Okay, moving on. Very easy here. Everybody should know what each of these things are. But please go ahead and pause the video for as long as you need to check the boxes. Okay, so the first one, those are headsets, or a headset, webcam, that would be a USB hub, speakers, uh, this is a docking station or laptop docking station. Okay, next. It's an e-reader. And this is a USB cable. Graphics tablet. That should be an external hard drive. And I've never seen one that looks like this, but this is a portable charger. Most chargers I've seen kind of like kind of like this i guess rectangular shape okay but anyways let's move on all right so here we have matching the verbs with the phrase uh, as you can see we have ventured into we have gone into the world of computers and the internet Okay, let, let's do number one together. Rename a file. All right, so go ahead, pause the video for as long as you need to match these up now. All right, so number two. Browse the web, browse the internet. Drag to the trash can. Click on an icon, click an icon. Reset a password. Put on standby. It's kind of like putting to sleep. Receive a Wi Fi signal. Press the shift key. Restart the computer. Track changes. All right, now if you need to pause and check your answers with what you see here, go ahead and pause now. All right, let's move on. All right. Still with the uh, computers and the internet, we have C will be the only one we do in class, but I'm sorry, in class, I'm getting ahead of myself. D will be doing in class, C we will, we will be doing now. What I wanted to say was take a look at the questions in D, think of the answers for you, and know that in class, you will be asking these questions and somebody will be asking you these same questions. This is for D, work with a partner, take turns. So we, remember, I plan on doing D in class. So it's important to look at the questions and think about what your answers will be when you are asked by the people in your group these questions. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now let's do C. 
complete the sentences using the verb and phrases from 4B. Let me go back and show you here. You're going to be using these in C. So go ahead, pause the video for as long as you need now. Okay, welcome back. Remember, these are the verbs and phrases that you should have here. Okay, before you shut down your computer, you should click on an icon to save your work. If you want to write in capital letters, you have to press the shift key first. For security reasons, you should reset your password now and then. It's always a good idea. If you do not want to keep a file, you can drag it to the trash can. In some places, you can't receive a Wi-Fi signal, so you cannot go online. If you have a problem, it often helps to restart the computer. All right, reminder, uh, D will be, will be something we do in class. All right, let's move on. Computers and internet, same old. All right, complete the comments by using the internet, using the internet with words from the box, sorry. All right, so we have bookmarks, tab, drop down, toolbar, zoom, history, links, scroll. These words go in these missing spots here. So there will be eight of them. So go ahead, pause this video for as long as you need to do these now. All right, welcome back, let's go. There's a lot of information, so you need to scroll down to find what you need. There are a lot of useful links to other websites. You can click on icons on the toolbar to open your favorite websites. To open a new tab, click on the plus above the toolbars. All right. You need to look at these quickly. Pause now. All right, next. There are some useful drop down menus where you can click on an arrow and a list appears. I want to go back to the site, so I have added it to my bookmarks. Click on the menu item History to see which websites you looked at before. If the font is too small, use Control and Plus on the keyboard to zoom in. Another trick is press Control, CTRL, and scroll the mouse wheel. That's another trick for number eight. All right, let's move on. All right, so F is very good for your company website. Uh, you don't have, you can or you don't have to uh, copy exactly the names of these tabs, but these are the types of tabs you will have when you are making your company website. So if you want to find any of this information, which tab would you click? And for G, look at the words at the bottom of pages 9 through 12. I'm not going to go back and uh, show you pages 9 through 12, but you should have your book with you right now. So go look at pages 9, 10, 11, and 12 on the bottom, the bottom of the page. You will see certain words. Those words go here in G. So for F and G, if you need to pause the video, you can pause it for as long as you need 
now. Okay, let's begin with F. So you want to know the address and phone number of the company. Which of these tabs do you click? Contact us. Job opportunities? Well, careers. You want a description of the company. About us. You want to know about the people who work for the company. Our staff. And what the company offers. Products and services. All right. So, um, you should have gone to pages 9 through 12, looked at the bottom of the page, down on the bottom, you would have seen some words, those words go here. All right, let's begin. Excuse me for interrupting, but I do not agree. My job has advantages and disadvantages. Asian Business Online did a survey of people, of people's communication habits. They asked me to write the minutes of the video conference. I prefer to work to watch movies on a big screen. That's why I like the movie theater. You can research a lot of topics on the internet. A dozen means 12. So a dozen is the same as 12. I'm fed up with my job. I want to change it. All right, go ahead and pause and double check your answers with these now. All right, we're getting into the reading. Now it says here that you need to scan, quickly look for the information. But this is a video, so you can always just read it. But the first part um, you're going to be looking for are these numbers. What is so important about these numbers? Six, 2003, 300 million, 2 billion. So go ahead and either scan quickly looking for these numbers or just read it. It's your choice, but you will need time. So go ahead and pause the video for as long as you need now. All right, welcome back. So here we go. Number six. Li Ding Tang work, went to work in Sweden six months ago. 2003. Skype first appeared in 2003. 300 million. Skype has over 300 million users. And 2 billion. Users make 2 billion minutes of calls a day. Just so you understand, 2 billion is nine zeros. Okay, continuing with the reading. Uh, go ahead and read this now and look for the answers to these questions, number one to five. So, Go ahead and pause the video for as long as you need now. All right, great. So here are the questions. Where does, well, where, where does he work? He works in Sweden. If you wrote Sweden, you're not wrong, but for this 
lesson book, uh, the long answer would be best. Where does he work? He works in Sweden. Who does he talk to on Skype? He talks to business partners, relatives, and friends back home. What is so attractive about Skype? The high quality of calls gives people the feeling that they are in a room with the people they are talking to. Okay, what is the orangutan's reward when they complete a task? Just a reminder, apostrophe S means belonging to one. S apostrophe belongs to many. So in this case, it belongs to, or it's the orangutan's many a reward. So one more time, what is the orangutan's reward when they complete a task? They are allowed to communicate via Skype with orangutans in other zoos. Tung says, Skype is here to stay. What does he mean? We will use Skype more and more in the future. Now you should know what an, an orangutan is, but instead of me describing it, if you don't know, go ahead and look it up online. But moving on. Okay, so these, these are the meaning of certain words in this article. What are the words? So go ahead and pause the video for as long as you need. Now, all right. So, the word that means unhappy, thinking about problems, worried, in contact, in touch, father, mother, sister, brother, relatives, a person who likes and admires something, a fan, a person who knows a lot about something, expert, a piece of equipment, device, a place at home where you can sit and relax, living room. All right, if you want to double check with the reading, your book, go ahead and pause the video now. All right, let's move on now to messages. You're going to listen to two people calling uh, and the secretary answers. But she made some mistakes. Find the mistakes here and write the correct, the corrections here. So one more time. Find the mistakes here and then write your corrections here. Let's listen. Track six, one. I'm sorry, but Miss Kondo isn't in her office. Um, she'll be back in about an hour. Could you ask her to call me back, please? Of course. Can she call you at the number on the display? No, she can call me at plus eight one four two three four five nine eight nine nine before five this evening. If not, I'll call again tomorrow morning. Uh, would you repeat the name of your company, please? It's the Enkai Food Company. That is E-N-K-A-I. And your name again, please? Nobu Takahashi. T-A-K-A-H-A-S-H-I. Thank you, Mr. Takahashi. I'll give her the message. Two. I'm afraid she's in a meeting. Can I take a message? Yes. Would you ask her to send me a new catalogue? The address is Vogelweg. That's 
V O G E L W E G. Number 29. The postal code is 56068 and the town is Koblenz. K O B L E N Z in Germany. And the name of your company again, please? Domag. Uh, how do you spell that? D O M A G. All in capital letters. Capital M A G. Okay, thanks. And uh, who shall I say called? Margarete Werner. W E R N E R. Okay, I'll pass on the message as soon as Miss Kondo comes in. Thank you. Goodbye. All right, great. Uh, there are three mistakes for each of these. So, go ahead, pause the video for as long as you need, or go back and listen one more time. But please do that now. All right, let's look at the mistakes and the corrections. Uh, the name of the company is Enkai with an E, not an I. The phone number is 423-459899. And he said that he would call again in the morning, tomorrow morning. All right, for the second message. Her last name, it sounds like Werner with a V, but in German, a W sounds like a V. And just so you know, a V sounds like an F. She's German, so she's going to pronounce her name Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R. -E -E the company is Domag all capital letters and the address is not uh, not 92 but 29. okay if you need to double check one more time please pause now all right let's move on all right more messages this time we have four messages you're not looking for mistakes, you're just listening and filling in the missing information. So let's listen to these messages. And again, you are writing only the important information right here, write only the important information. Again, you're listening to, to each caller and writing the missing information, but only the, the important information. All right, let's begin. Track seven, message one. This is a message for Ethan Lane from Bob Kowalski, K-O-W-A-L-S-K-I. Ethan, I'm in Singapore. I'm staying until Friday. Perhaps we can meet. I'm at the Park Hotel. The number is 065-8246-3220. I repeat, 065-8246-3220. Room number 134. Can you call me today? Message 2. Hello, this is Hendrik Edegar calling Ethan Lane from Stockholm. John Fox gave me your name and your number. He said you can recommend a shipping company in Singapore. Would you email the name of the company to me, please? The address is Hendrik, H-E-N-D-R-I-K, dot Edegran, E-D-E-G-R-A-N, at gmail.com. Thanks. Message three. Hi, Ethan. It's Anne. We have an appointment for Monday, but I'm afraid I can't make it. I'm still in Bangkok. My mother is sick, so I have to stay here. 
I'm really sorry. I'll call again as soon as possible to make a new appointment. Message 4 This is a message for Ethan Lane from James Wright. That's W-R-I-G-H-T. We met at the trade show in Kuala Lumpur, and I promised to check some sales figures. You were right. Sales went up in January, but fell in February by 15%. If you have any questions, you can call me at 0044-2456-554-237. That's 0044-2456-554-237. James Wright. J-A-M-E-S-W-R-I-G-H-T. All right. As usual, if you need to go back and listen one more time or pause the video, please do so now. Okay, let's uh, let's go over these answers. So, message one: Mr. Kowalski is in Singapore until Friday. So please. Call today at the Park Hotel. The phone number is 065-8246-3220. And the room number is 134. Message two, Hendrik or Hendrik Edegan called from Stockholm. He got your name and number from John Fox. He wants to know the name of a shipping company in Singapore. So please send him an email. His email address is hendrik.edegran at gmail.com. Okay, message three. And called about Monday. Remember, most important information. So Ethan Lane knows about the meeting, so she, so you would only have to write Monday. She can't make it because her mother is sick. She'll call again to make a new appointment. All right, and message number four, uh, James Wright called. You met him at a trade show in Kuala Lumpur. He has checked the sales figures. In January, sales went up, but fell in February by 15%. Or, but in February fell 15%. Something like that. But if you have questions, call him at 0044-2456-554-237. All right, if you need to double check your answers against these answers, you can pause the video now. All right, and I believe this should be the one of the last things we are doing. Can you understand these text messages? WLBL84MTG tonight. Will be late for meeting tonight. All right, go ahead and look at these other four here and see if you can guess what they mean. So go ahead, pause the video for as long as you need now. Okay, number two. All these letters and numbers mean thanks for your message. Number three, we'll see you late tonight. 
and I, you don't say it, but you understand. Good meeting. Please call me as soon as possible. Again, in parentheses, was it, but here it's good meeting. Please call me as soon as possible. Will you be at meeting tomorrow? Again, they did not use the. All right. Again, this all has to do with time, but uh, I plan to do D in class, coming up with your own messages. Can the people in your group guess what you're trying to say? All right. And that's it. This page uh, is covered in the video and quiz that is online. Just go to week three, watch the video, and then take the online quiz. Yeah. So that's it. Great job. I hope everybody um, liked this. And either I'll see you in the next video uh, for unit three. Or hopefully I'll see you in class. So stay healthy and see you soon. Bye.